Dormammu, I've come to bargain. I absolutely love negotiation games, where one of the fundamental tenets of the game, the biggest gear in the engine of how everything works, is social. Because in so many other games with money and goods flying around, the immutable laws of spend this to get this can make things predictable, maybe in a good way, but when those exchanges are governed by humans, messy, cruel, selfish, angry, desperate humans, it makes things chaotic in the very best way. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. I've made no secret of how I'm a huge fan of games with a lot of player interaction where your choices greatly affect other people, and negotiation games are that all of that, with some players' entire games hinging on striking the right deal at the right time. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Three wool for two wood, final offer. This is the collection starter, and here are the 10 best negotiation board games. Also, please like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe to the channel to subscribe. Number 10, Catan. All right, let's talk about Catan. Now, don't get it twisted. Catan isn't bad, and the fact we don't talk about it all that much on No Rolls Bar shouldn't make you think we're trying to tear down the Catanarchy. It's just a bit old, a bit long, and other games have done a lot of its main mechanics better. But it is worth mentioning that the really fun aspect of Catan, the thing that a lot of non-German gamers hadn't seen before it made a big splash, was the negotiation mechanic. And actually, that's still great. Every turn, players receive resources based on where they've built their little towns. They get to bargain around the table with those resources. Auntie Barbara, I'll give you three clay for one ore. What do you mean no? What do you mean no, Auntie Barbara? Where are you gonna get clay from? From Terry? He's good for nothing but wool. He's a joke. You're a joke. Make the deal. It's great for two reasons. It keeps everyone engaged on everyone's turn, and it also makes Catan games feel different each time. The backbone of the game, formed by unique player dynamics, dynamics that can make trading either a pleasant communal marketplace or a ruthless den of bastards. Number 9. Panic on Wall Street. Let's get noisy. In life, negotiation can take many forms. Maybe it's a friendly haggling over the price of a plum at a market. Maybe it's desperate pleading so Johnny the Cousin stops his Goombas giving you a Hudson special. Or maybe it's the deafening roar of the stock market floor. Panic on Wall Street is a high-intensity recreation of the latter. In the game, you're divided into two teams, managers, with businesses like this anti-snore technology that's definitely not a murder weapon, and investors with handfuls of cash looking for a deal. With two minutes on the clock, all investors at the same time try and strike deals with managers for control of their businesses with a timer ticking down, down, down. I might offer you 25 for your green business. We make the deal, but then Jeff offers you 40 for it. Are you insane, Jeff? It's worth 30 at best. Suddenly, I've only got 20 seconds left to try and strike another deal with someone else. Oh God, all the good stuff's already gone. I guess I'll buy this blue thing. Then, after the time runs out, we roll these stock dice, which decide how much the investors will be paid by the bank for each color business. And whoops, bad luck, Jeff. That green business is now only worth 10 whole bucks. Sorry about your defective murder boxes, idiot. It's a super light but super energetic party game that plays up to an insane 11 people, and I want to be a part of that scrum. Number eight, nothing personal. Well, hey, it turns out Johnny the Cousin hasn't forgotten about me. Oh, great. Nothing Personal is a mobster-themed game of double-dealing power struggles and also getting to wear a gold ring. No, for real, one of the components is a gold ring that one of the players wears when they're the capo and settling disputes between players. It's rad. Hope you've washed your finger. The board in front of you displays a crime family of mobsters, and during the game you'll be playing cards allowing you to place influence on certain wise guys. Each round, whoever has the most influence on that low life gets paid in money, and most important, a little respect. There's lots of mean and nasty ways you can interact with other players. You can make a move on someone else's mobster, try and take their spot and possibly die in the attempt. You can throw your money around, locking poor players out of playing cards, and best of all, you can negotiate. It's an explicit rule in the game that pretty much everything can be bargained with. Money, cards, promises of non-aggression. None of these deals are binding, BT dubs, because mobsters are the worst. And then you've got the capo sitting above everything with their shiny ring, breaking ties, and maybe making a few dollary deals in exchange, who's to say? Number seven, New Angeles. Ah, dystopian futures built around mega corporations making shifty alliances in order to better exploit the populace with zero consequences outside of the occasional right or widespread disease. Love a bit of escapism in my games. New Angeles sees you all becoming one of these mega corporations, farming the aforementioned city for resources and capital. However, the more you ravage it, the more likely you are to see resistance in the form of crime, people protesting, or viral outbreak. Keeping this city under control is going to require, and it strikes a dagger through your corporate heart to say it, 
teamwork. See, New Angeles is a semi-co-op game. If the city breaks down, you all lose. But each player has a secret rival, one of the other players. And in order for you to win, at the end of the game, you have to have more points than that rival. On every turn, you're voting on a plan, maybe to keep the city from collapsing into plague, or maybe that action is actually just really good for you. And maybe you could grease the votes to pass it with some victory points in cash, which turns every round into a delicious meal of shifty paranoid bargaining. You're trying to remove disease from the streets and you can bribe other players to vote your way. But if that player is someone else's rival, they will burn your deal to the ground out of sheer self-interest and support the nakedly self-interested policy of one of your rivals. And oh God, you just wanted to put some vaccines on the streets. Why is everyone so awful? Number six, millions of dollars. You know what makes negotiation games more stressful? Hidden roles. If you like backstabbing as much as we do and no roles barred, consider checking out millions of dollars, a game about putting together the perfect heist crew from a selection of utter wankers. You are the wankers. Each round, you'll have an amount of money you'll be stealing and sharing as as long as a crew can be put together. Each crew can be made up of a mastermind, a driver, a brute, a crook, and a snitch. At the start of the round, everyone puts one of these cards forward face down. They're shuffled and all but one are revealed, so no one quite knows who's played what. Why is this important? Well, because if two or more of the same type of criminal end up going on the heist, both players are eliminated and don't get to share the loot. So before the heist actually starts, players can negotiate for other players to leave the heist. Say there are two driver cards revealed, one of them is mine, so I need to find the other driver and maybe slip them a few bucks to back out. Maybe someone identifies as a driver, but before that person agrees to my deal, Julia pays them a few more bucks to stay. Annoying, but seeing that I'm beaten, I back out, only it's revealed that Julia was the other driver all along, and the guy who claimed to be one was lying, and it was all a long con to screw you over. It's a sneaky, vicious little puzzle of lies, threats, and bribes, and I love it so. Number five, Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall, provided to us by our our friends at Asthma Day UK is a game about trying to steal elections during the immigration boom of 19th century America. Cool, nothing bleak about this. It's a cutthroat game of slander, political point scoring, gerrymandering, and broken promises. See, as immigrants from various countries, England, Ireland, Italy, Germany, enter New York, they're housed by the players in districts or wards until some wards become dominated by certain ethnic groups. On your turn, if you house an Irish immigrant, you gain one token of Irish political favor because you're on their their side. You really care about the Irish plight. There are no way just votes on the map to you. You're one of the good politicians. Every four turns, there'll be an election to crown a new mayor of New York, and each ward will vote. During these votes, you might cash in various political favors to boost your poll numbers, and this is where the negotiation comes in, smeared across this cynical, cruel landscape like so much corrupt Nutella. You give me this ward, I would vote against you in your other contested ward, or I'll make sure that you get elected mayor, but you need to appoint me precinct chairman so I can spend the next four years rehousing poor innocent people and guarantee I lock up the next election. Cynical, mean, but great. Number four, Bonanza. After capitalism gone wrong and political racketeering, this game's just about beans. That's a welcome bit of pleasantness and oh no, this bean's going to murder me. Bonanza is a trading card game that takes a really fun bit of Catan and makes it its own game. In Bonanza, you have a hand of bean cards and look at these beans, there's some personality in these beans. On your turn, you take the top card of your hand and plant it in front of you. You can only have two bean fields and only one type of bean in each field. So if both of them are full, you'll have to harvest one in order to make room. Once that card is planted, you then take two more cards from the draw deck and then you can use these, any of the beans in your hand and any of the beans in your fields to trade with anyone. You can donate cards you don't want to to other players, you can swap beans, you can make promises of future beans, all to try to build the biggest sets you can so that when you eventually do have to harvest a field of beans, there are enough of one type to give you precious bean money. God, I really have said the word bean a lot. It's a very addictive and simple game, perfect for players who are sick of building roads in Catan and just want to get straight to the juicy haggling. Number three, Sheriff of Nottingham. Fun fact, Sheriff of Nottingham was one of the first board games I ever bought when I first started collecting, and I have played the hell out of it because it's choice. Your play traders coming to the city of Nottingham to build sets of various wares, apples, cheese, chickens, apart from one player who is the sheriff for that turn and is basically acting as customs. Each turn you'll choose which one type of ware you're bringing into the market and how many before putting them in this little sealed bag. Then you declare what they are to the sheriff. Oh, there are three apples in this bag, sheriff. No more, no less. Three apples. Love apples. Please don't look in the bag 
bag though. See, in this game, you can lie about what's in there. Maybe it's not three apples at all, but one apple, one chicken, one cheese. Or worse, you're bringing in illegal contraband. Hey, trader, why is your bag shaped like a crossbow? <laughs> That's all these pesticide sheriffs. Apples just be like that now. If the sheriff is suspicious of you, they can search your bag. And if anything's out of the ordinary, they confiscate the cards you lied about and you have to pay a fine. But if you were telling the truth, they have to pay you. So right there, that's a fun little bluffing game. But the best part is you can bribe the sheriff not to look in your bag. In fact, you can strike deals about anything. Not only will I pay you to not search my bag, but I will pay you double to definitely search Jeff's bag. Heard he's gotten in with those crossbow merchants. Awful business. Every turn is crammed full of bribery, lies, and sleazy deals. It is huge fun. Number two, Sidereal Confluence. Or to give it its full title, Sidereal Confluence, Trading and Negotiation in the Elysian Quadrant. F me game, it's a good job you're excellent. Yes, Sidereal Confluence has a name that actively dares its customers not to buy it, but that would be a shame because it might just be the best pure negotiation game on the market. It is also hard work. Each player is an alien race replete with backstory, special cards and superpowers with names like the Kalian Plutocracy, the Kyaja Vikalim Directorate or the Nope. Each race has a bunch of machine cards which takes cubes and turns them into other cubes which you can then use to buy other cards, gain points and the like. Problem is, each race rarely, if ever, produces the resources that they need, which means you're gonna need the cubes of your neighbors, which means deals. Each round starts with a huge simultaneous trading phase where everyone is hustling for the scant resources on offer, flogging cubes to get cubes, lending out their own technology cards, selling ships, all while the cubes you need are disappearing faster than you can spot them. It's pulse pounding stuff, but it is also an engine building game where the value of the stuff you're building with is in constant flux, which is difficult on top of difficult. Also, it makes your table look like a quarterly projections report gone LARPing. Like, it's a lot. But for heavier gamers that are looking for a game that explodes otherwise heatless euros by cramming it full of the unpredictable human element, this might just be your new favorite game. Not mine, of course. That would be number one, Chinatown. I love Chinatown. It's in my top 10 games of all time, and this is why. See, negotiation games operate at the speed of thought. In order to adjust your deals on the fly, apply pressure, bluff, threaten, all the fun stuff, you need to be in full comprehension of everything in play. Sidereal Confluence is a bit beyond my wheelhouse in that regard, but Chinatown sits in it perfectly. In the game, you're trying to build businesses. Each business needs to have a certain number of tiles connected on the map to be complete and earn big money. Each go, each player is given a random bunch of empty lots on on the board which they mark with their color chips and a bunch of building tiles which they lay in front of them all the information nice and clear you know what you need you know who's got it then the game just says go and it's time to deal you want to persuade other players to sell you their empty lots that are near ones you already own so you can build the businesses maybe you can swap lots with someone else pay them hard cash trade a bunch of building tiles that mean nothing to you anything goes but unlike the hectic panic on wall street or the cerebral sidereal confluence you can take your time work a grift and really twist the knife. Chinatown is one of the most reliably enjoyable social board games I own because one round someone might have all the power because they just happen to have all the lots that you need but next round maybe luck smiles on you gives you that one single lot that they really need and suddenly Oh, now Dormammu's come to bargain. It's amazing. And that's our list. What's your favorite negotiation game? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps us out. And check out more of No Rolls Bard for great board game content. Get on board.